All right, what's happening, y'all? We got a there special you. guest in the building, A and R, industry executive, uh, many titles. Yeah, Cause today's music industry, you gotta have many titles. You already know, but yes, sir. we got Big Gang in the building. Yes, sir. And his other industry partner, Donnie Cash, in the building, man. Special guest, appreciate you coming through, man. What's going on? What's happening? Shit, another day in the neighborhood, man. You know how I go. Working, working, catching flights, signing deals, getting it done, man. Laying the, laying the groundwork. Man. And, hey, I can honestly say, shit, progress. Constant progress. Progress. That's all that matters, Constant man. progress. Moving forward. Moving forward, man. And uh, not backward. Can't stay stagnant, you see, man. Like, shit, at the end of the day, if you stagnant with this shit and you just in the same spot, you ain't going to – there's no room for real growth. Mm. Talk about it. All right, let's get into some uh, topics before we jump into the, uh, you know, what you guys do and what you guys been got going on. Uh, so since we last saw you, um, FYBJ Main has kind of gone crazy and took it over. Um, what you think about him, you know, being, ain't he from Chicago too? Yeah, I love yeah. folks. That's my nigga. I fuck with folks. Like, that's one of the guys. He, he doing what he's supposed to do. Like, it's a motherfucker that's from Chicago and know better. Like, like Chicago the era now, like, bro, the war in Chirac that the industry has, like, blew up and made to, that shit over with now so it's like now you got guys after that life creating a new life for themselves mm. so it, it's like i tell my folks all the time don't let that shit fool y'all like he is a killer like he's a shooter you feel me he a street nigga he a normal, he a normal street nigga just like everybody else he just found his avenue and it works for him that's all it is and he can rap J man can rap he can really rap He's, yeah, I, he can. I'm talking about for him. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, for yeah. him, like he can rap. Like put it like this. In this climate of today's mm -hmm. industry, he'd be fine. Mm -hmm. Let me rephrase that and say that better, because I don't make it seem like this nigga the second coming to Eminem or some shit like I that. Lie, Look, that's how you was looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking hey, at you oh, too. Like, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> let me, let me, let me clarify that. <laughs> this nigga is not Marshall Mathers. This nigga's not <laughs> not Sear Jones or Sean Carter. <laughs> No, 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 no. He FYBJ Main. He still gotta go do like, it hit different. It hit different. Like he ain't there yet. It hit different, buddy. He ain't there yet. He hard, but folks ain't there yet. He ain't there yet. He just the looks he getting, the movement that he pushing, the shit that he doing. Shouts out to Tay Savage. That's one of my homies for real, for real. Shout out to Willsworth, 43rd, all them niggas. Shout out to Murder Town, home team. Love y'all, miss y'all niggas, all that good shit. But um, that nigga, he doing what he's supposed to do. Like, he's abusing the eyes and ears. And that's what a lot of people don't know how to do today in this in industry. They don't know how to stay in front of a camera. You look at most artists, you look at most social media influencers, they don't know how to live well, in front of a camera. at the end of the day, you got to understand that, like, a lot of these artists don't understand that it's the entertainment business. And they so focus on just the music and putting out the most music, but it's the entertainment business. So... I mean, if you ain't out here entertaining, if you ain't the baby, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you gotta find different gimmicks to try to get out there. And I think that's what a lot of artists is trying to do. Like, I'm not a type of nigga that get up on this damn thing and just talk. This is the first time you hear me talk, because I ain't really got too much to say or input. But when you talk about the industry, then I got a little bit, you know, to say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't want to, like, do a, a podcast, but I might be interested in doing reviews. Yeah, that See makes sense. Man. See me, I can do this shit all day. Yeah, I I can, but I can do industry. I can do a podcast all day. I do this shit all day, cause I I got questions. I be want to ask. I know, my, be honest with you, people be want to talk to me. For some ungodly, like you see it all the time. People be want to talk to me, sure. so I can sit there and just talk. I can get a game in different angles. So like, once you make yourself like a uh, a jungle book, everybody want to read you. For sure, yeah. <laughs> you make yourself the jungle book. Hey, everybody know who Mowgli is. Real <laughs> shit. <laughs> everybody know who Mowgli is. All right, let's go next topic. Uh, speaking of um, Tay Savage, how do you feel about him, like, getting the Empire deal? Kind of with really no background in music, no proven, you know, sales and streams. But he got the – and he got a label deal. Look at my Not face. Not just a regular deal, a label deal. Look at my face. Look at my face. That's my homie. Who you think told them niggas? Watch him on YouTube. That's my man. He followed me on Instagram and all that. 
who you think went to Cali and sat out there with Gold Toes and Gazi and them in a session and was like, hey, go get him. I didn't go put the play together. I'm not taking no credit whatsoever. I'm not saying I got him signed or none of that. I was close enough to them niggas to say, hey, he fresh from home. He really the second coming of Vaughn. Go get him. Yeah, that was a known fact. That's me. It's my man's man. I ain't going to lie. Caddy opened up a door for your ass, I promise you. Yeah, that, that's me. That's me. Not even on some, hey, who sign him? I want to cut. That was some. In the session, in the A&R session, in the A&R meeting, hey, playing the playlist, he pops up on the vid. He pops up on YouTube. Another dude, another kid from Sacramento is playing him. Hey, that's Tay Savage. He from Wellsworth. He from Chicago. I'm very familiar with him. Go fuck with him. Go get him. He he the hottest, he the next hottest nigga coming from Chicago. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> that's what I say. That's my nigga. Like, that's folks. Like, I can call him. That's my man. That's some breaking news. What um, do you think he gonna make a profit or make any money? Cause I has, yeah. has he dropped on Empire yet? Yeah, yeah. Folks doing good. He got songs with Geechee Gotti. He See, traveling. I haven't been tapping in, so I'm having Yeah, to... folks doing his thing. Like I told them niggas at uh Empire. All he need is just that. Like certain you know how you strike a match? Yeah. Certain motherfuckers don't need the fire. They mm -hmm. just need the match. He check out. Folks been folks been him his whole life. Mm -hmm. Like that ain't that he that ain't no fake hey that ain't no none of that he really like that but he old enough you see he old enough he in his thirties yeah. he old enough and wise enough like most of us Chicago niggas to know fuck all that game banging shit we are what we are already let's go get some money let's go get some money that's at a level though you yeah that's at a certain like, level like, like a lot of these kids out here just doing that monkey see monkey do shit mm -hmm. and they don't understand that that's really devaluing what they're really trying to do and then when you get to the older that like shit, nigga, i'm gonna be honest with money, you, man, you know these I mean? labels scared to get these niggas a deal now <laughs> because they did they, 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 they die yeah, they died like they that. bro they just spent two hundred thousand on your first <laughs> single you got a little fame and got killed that's a lost investment let me explain to these niggas that don't know this shit. That rap, you niggas rap, y'all want to be gangster rappers. Let me explain what goes on. When you sign a deal, just like you sign any contract, when you sign a recording artist agreement, you are they property. They own, they're, they're responsible for you. You, you own, you, you get, they got to know where you at. Positive control. They need to be in contact with your manager through email, all that. Yes. This is a known fucking fact. You are a whole liability. Once they give you that advance money, whether it be 15000 to a million to millions, you are now an investment. That ain't money we gave you to live lavish on. No. That million dollars we gave you, we gave you a million dollars. We gave you half of that up front. We gave you a half a million because your other half on the back end once you complete your project. We gave you a half a million. 250 of that going towards your album. Half of that, the niggas don't even understand this shit. It, it should. should. That's where they fuck That's where they shit. fuck up at. <laughs> niggas get the advance and don't fucking know <laughs> that, bro, that shit is not for you to go spend all your money on hoes, clothes, and drugs, and bullshit. That shit, if they give you $500,000, a half a milli, the half of that need to go onto the side. And the other two fifty, you out of, out of the other two fifty, fifty thousand need to go on shelter, food, but that's also vehicle. Good. Like, we can't just blame it on them. It's a, it's, it's, it plays a lot of part like the people that's in your camp. Yeah. Niggas ain't teaching like, literacy. Like somebody if you, if, you know what I'm saying? Like you got somebody in your camp talking about damn gang. Why I ain't looking like this? Why I ain't looking like that? And you you so worried about trying to look apart and everything. Yeah, you trying to, goes, trying to spend money on shit that don't really matter right now. If you ain't never ran a business before, you might want to take some. Some notes and yeah. go learn how to figure nah, out how I'm gonna make this flip and, and bring it back. Maturity. You, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, everybody don't get to go. Every, yeah. Well, I mean, they do. Yeah, but they're but not, they but don't. They're not, but they're not coming like, right now. Like this. Yeah. They're not coming right now. Everybody <laughs> don't. Everybody don't finish the race with you. Let me put it like that. Because because uh, because everybody agenda. ain't gonna see the bigger picture. Exactly because of their own agenda. Because they, everybody got their own agenda. Look, I'm gonna keep it a bean. You know this, me and you. Look how many niggas that was fucking with Double that don't fuck with Double. None, of, but I knew that from the get go. That's why I didn't. Ne I never allowed too many people in the studio. They just thought I was an ass. So like, niggas was being. They thought like, we niggas was being like, fucked you know, up. What you have to be here for, man? You just here to take pictures. And now they see. And now they see Shorty catching the second win. 
and he back up. Man, now they see him getting back up. Now it's hey, bro. You know, ooh, I, ooh. You know I'm not going to speak on. I'm just going to show. Yeah, it. I'm just yeah. I'm gonna just yeah. let him. I'm gonna let him keep doing watch, what he's doing. Yeah, people watching it on TV than opposed to your partner doing it. Now yeah, you're to live in the moment. Yeah, what you don't know is and then you know what it was. Partner. A lot of motherfuckers thought yeah. it was over with for sure. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's the hanger on effect. Once they see like, oh yeah, ooh, ooh. but then when you see like, all right, what well, motherfuckers better realize this this rap shit is like a boxing match, bro. This shit is like a fit. This music industry shit is like a fifteen round boxing match, bro. You gonna get a chance to get a second win, mm-hmm. and I just hope I tell everybody. I just hope you know what you do with it. Even with us, even with me and him, I tell people all the time. I finally just hit my stride with this shit. You know what I'm saying? I just finally hit my stride. Like I finally got my got my battle win. Like yeah, I could do this shit all day, every day, mm-hmm. never get tired. Like I don't, I get it. And you niggas gonna pay like you way to fuck with me. Ain't no, ain't, ain't nothing for free. Ain't the the resume too big now. When I was trying to fuck with niggas here, it was a whole different story. Now I'm here, so it's like, even to get on my playing field, we gotta talk different numbers. We gotta talk a whole different ball game now. Like I said, and then and, and Tay Savage ain't had to look out. He did. He didn't have to do shit. Folks dropped out on his own and looked out for a nigga. You feel what I'm saying? In kind, in a different way. You feel what I'm saying? Monetary as fuck, but in a different way. Looked out, and he ain't had to. But it was, oh, nigga from Chicago put me in the room? Oh, that's folks. Bet. It's, it's all about how you move and what you move. Longevity is the key. Every If you do going live, doing the same shit with the same group of niggas, you're not outreaching to other avenues, you're not working with other artists, you're going to die. You're gonna die. Like the average attention span in hip hop is 90 days. Do you know that? The average attention span in hip hop is 90 days. And not even that. For what I got, for what I got from a label executive like three weeks ago, he said uh, is it was 90 days last year. He said now it's like 82 days or 80 days. He said that's what he said. You notice every year songs get shorter and shorter. And I looked up. <laughs> song I looked up last year. Songs was like 250. In like three minutes, this is your songs one forty five, two fifteen, and they hella looped, and they hella looped, That's and you right. notice, and you know, and if you notice one thing, you notice niggas bringing them samples back, Man. niggas going sample crazy right crazy. now, history repeating itself. Because the one thing that kind of, kind of disappoints me about a lot of this generation's art is that they ain't got no personality, so they ain't got no creativity. Mm. They just taking bits and pieces of other other people. Towards themselves, then when you run out of that, that's your hype, bro. Right. Now you're trying to get your second win, you can't do it because mm-hmm. you ain't got nothing. You ain't got you shit. Me? It's hard. It's, can't man, pull Drake. it's hard. It's hard, believe it or not, right. to create more than like a lot of niggas can't even give you a sophomore album. Mm-hmm. They give you everything they got on one album because they have, they can't create a life after that. Like most motherfuckers, I tell people all the time. Most people that really rap, like really rap, that really went through some shit, that went through a struggle, they really got albums, 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 like Kendrick, motherfuckers like that, that really come from shit, they got albums, albums, because they got a lifetime to talk about shit. Most motherfuckers, if you notice, the motherfuckers that come from a little sum or you don't really know for half, they can't really talk about too much because there's no storybook. Mm. Nobody, like, you just came out of nowhere, and I wouldn't even call you an industry plant. You just came out of nowhere. You just came into a little money. You ran into the right beat maker. You ran into the right people. You got an opportunity, and you made it happen, which that's great. But when you want longevity, there has to be a story. There has to be a story, and a lot of niggas is not telling stories no more. That's why rap is not the, the dominant genre in music no more. Well, let's talk about that because that was one of the topics. Why you think that uh, it's, it's you know declining? Ain't no, uh, like I just said, ain't no more originality. Ain't no, like, bro, like, the average, like, all right. And, and, and but ain't no originality in other genres, too. It's kind of all copy I'm and paste. I'm putting it like this. Like, all right, I'll make it make sense. <sighs> let's do the, let's do the, the, the. Dissecting. Dissecting. All right. Taylor Swift and Beyonce, right? Beyonce levels. Beyonce hit, like. She bought $4.5 billion in the economy to the United States on this tour. You know that, right? Mm. Uh-huh. So, t- 
Taylor Swift did quadruple that. You know what I'm saying? It's levels. Afrobeats. Tim's ain't doing what Burner Boy doing. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? There's a there's a different, there's lines. There's lines. Hip hop, everybody drilling, everybody killing. Yeah. I, I, like you, I'm gonna tell you some real shit. Do you know why sexy red is such a phenomenon? Sexy red is such a fucking phenomenon because she speaks for a subgenre of women that are forgotten. That's why Sexy Red is is a, a phenomenon. She's not out of nowhere. It's that for the last five or ten years, all the women in hip-hop has been perceived and given to us like bosses. All of them has been perceived and given to us like bosses. Cash Doll, Asian Doll, all, all the dolls. Fuck it, man. Cardi B. And I wouldn't even say Cardi B. Her, her rise was more organic because we seen where she came from. Right. Same thing with Glorilla. We seen where she came from. Sexy Red is a forgotten genre of female. Mm -hmm. There's a female that you know that go to the club right now from Thursday to Sunday with her furry fucking slides and her motherfucking socks mm -hmm. and her bottle of ENJ and her black and mild and she and that bitch, hey, every weekend. So I'm going to just bring it up once again. This is called the entertainment business. business. Uh, okay? Yeah. That's the gimmick. And yes, it's a, a narrative some people look down on, but... In the end of the day, that's a real life figure that we know. We all know a sexy red. I, mean, I know a couple. We of all them. know a sexy red. That's just the end of the day. But like, that's a, this the entertainment business. That's her gimmick. That's what she rolling with. That's her persona that she gotta push. I think I just saw say cheese earlier today that the uh, city girls got a, a new album called Raw, real ass whores. And there's a lot of females up under there saying why they couldn't be real ass women to empower women. That's not their gimmick. City girl. They're that the city girls. Question. They're here to they're here to trick men, milk them. They're here to like that's their that's yeah, their gimmick. gimmick. Yeah. That's the agenda that they push. So that's you, their once the people understand that it's the entertainment business, then then they could start putting so much feelings into it. Like yes, right. why is that shit getting pushed the most? Because everybody deep down in their side, they want to be a city girl. Yeah, like that's every, what it every is. Female, every female, every female, every female, they want to be like, hey, they want, they want, they want, they want, they want every man. female. They go to the club, they bending over, shaking ass, no drawers on their heels. Every female, a single mom, a baby mom, right now that don't got sexy red. Every female got some sexy red. Girls, you feel me? A Cardi B song in their playlist. Every female got some kids in your ear, like going crazy. Everything stressing you out. Every female want to be outside. That's every nostalgic. Every female got. Some motherfucking sexy red in them, bro. Yeah. Every female want to be just as brazen, just like they wanted to be like Lil' Kim and Foxy Brown. Every female want to be sexually liberating as them them hoes is. Same Trust me, bro. They they just just as just as they much as they criticize her like about her talking about her coochie pink and her booty hole brown. They wish they can go in a room full of niggas and say that shit, bro. As I'm telling you. We, most people, when they feel what they don't understand, and the people that they idolize, they crucify sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Because they want to be like Because they want to be like them. <laughs> Niggas hated they on Michael it. Jordan for, for him it, being they him. They do it better. I want to be like Mike. They do it better. The kids made it. If you notice, <laughs> Michael Jordan was the coolest nigga in the world until somebody said, I want to be like Mike. I want to be like Mike. And you know that's when all the gambling <laughs> shit started. His daddy got killed. That's all crazy. the most negative shit that could happen to a nigga started happening when oh, people when people wanted to think about it. That was around the time that, that was around the time niggas the Gatorade commercial dropped. Remember, I want to be like mm -hmm. my like my. That was around the second championship. I mean the third, the three going towards the three P. Remember that shit after the three P. That was that shit. Mm -hmm. Them niggas ran that campaign. And right there, once he hit mythic and epic proportions, think about it, like, for real, for real. That's when he became a problem. When people started wanting to be like and idolize him. Because yeah. before when before he won, niggas, ain't, niggas was fucking with Mike, but niggas ain't want to be like Mike. Right. Niggas wanted to be like Magic and Bird still. Right. Niggas wanted to be like Isaiah Thomas. Right. 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 Niggas, got, niggas still wanted to be like Dr. J. Until right. Right. he started winning. Then when he got good, when he got great, and they seen they couldn't fuck him up, that's when it became a problem. Now he's idolized. Now we gotta tear him down. Right. We hate that nigga. Right. Same thing with Sexy Red. If she didn't go, if she didn't get famous as she was, and she was just a mid-level motherfucker that wasn't doing what she was doing, she wouldn't get this much hate. 
She's only getting as much hate because she's winning. Right. If she was just, if she was like, um, what any one of them, other, a, a just Britney, a mid level ass female. No disrespect, but just being one hundred. Yeah. If you was a mid card playing ass female, like an Asian doll, you done came in with right. whatever. She would not get this much hate. Right. But because she's winning at the highest level, she's on the field with the fucking Jets. Right. She's in shit with Drake. Bitches wait a whole lifetime to get the Drake. I know niggas that's fanning over Drake. I heard if you look yeah. him in his eyes, you'll want to fuck him. So, yeah, oh, this niggas wait their whole life to get the Drake. They said that about Prince. They said, I told you. I told what I tell you, nigga. I told you. I told I be telling I niggas did. about that I shit. Niggas think I be playing. I said personally, I'm just not Bro, be like, it ain't, it ain't just a Dave Chappelle no, skit. You know, you know Prince from Minnesota. No, yeah. Bro, I got I some OG care. niggas that was like, bro, real shit. Niggas real deal was like, hey. I'm sorry. OG niggas was telling me how they used to party with this nigga back in the 80s. And like, that's how I knew Prince wasn't really gay. No, Prince is I knew that. Man. I knew that when I was a kid. When niggas, when it was taboo back in the nineties, and niggas was confused. I knew then, like in my, the early, my like nine, ten, eleven. The older niggas I was around was like, nigga, you know, you know, Prince ain't gay, right? Y'all know he be fucking all the hoes and doing all the drugs, right? Bro, and I'm like, Ashley what? Take your bitch and Ashley's chat. They For like, real. yeah, this nigga in the club. This nigga, this nigga he is in Minnesota. That. He, he had a club. That. He had a club called Rain, and like, nigga, he was in the club, like getting fucked up. Taking niggas hoes. Real, this is real nigga shit. <laughs> this Prince, this drug dealer's going from Chicago, fucking with him and Morris Day in the time, back in the 80s and 90s, bro. Yeah. yeah and niggas, and niggas put me on that game like, fun. this nigga Prince is like that. I'm like, what? Prince? I'm 10, 11. Like, what? Sorry, I don't care. Prince, my daddy telling me this. I'm going to go see him in the feds. Right. Him no. and Curtis Day. <laughs> Still, uh, no. What's the nigga that okay. used to hold the mirror for him? Jerome. Hold my mirror, Jerome. Mm-hmm. Him? Bro, they say that nigga a gangster, bro. Yeah, like they say Jerome, that's why he was the muscle. Yeah. He was Prince and Morris Day muscle for a reason. A nigga was like that. Jerome, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Get my mirror, Jerome. Jerome yeah. yeah. It's facts, though. That's crazy. Jerome was a gangster, like GD. Yeah. Like gangster. <laughs> like standing on business. Like going to sessions, fucking with Larry Hoover and them. Yeah. Jerome oh, from Perp, from Perp right. Rose Day in the time, <laughs> yeah. So getting just, active. I know real. I'm telling you, bro. Y'all might bullshit. Y'all might think I'm playing. Just like Jason Weaver. Yes, bro. I just can't wait to be king, Jason Weaver. Yes, bro. Yeah, him, Lorenz Tate, and his brothers. They like that. The, and these Chicago niggas. Yeah, motherfuckers that's from Chicago. You wouldn't think like that. Just like Isaiah Thomas. His brother, bro, both his brothers died. Back now, so both his brothers like, died on the streets. <laughs> both of his brothers died on the streets. One died that's of a like heroin overdose and one drank himself to death. Mm. They was vice lords, bro. Right. Isaiah Thomas, all the niggas. It's like Dan Rose brothers. His brother, that nigga, Daniel Rose, he that nigga. He got it for the GDs on 69th. He that nigga. Yeah, his family, they like that. It's, it's everywhere. But back to Prince, they say <laughs> if you look that nigga in his eyes or you be on him too tough, you want to fuck that nigga. So nah. it be like that. Nah. Sexy Red is That's famous wild. and going to keep being famous and going to keep winning because it's going to be a long day. When have you ever seen Ratchet Hoes get some airtime and shut up? Uh, <laughs> she got the biggest and most unheard demographic behind her right now. She got the seven or eight baby mama game behind her right now. Yeah, she got niggas. She got niggas like me behind her that can't pull out of a driveway. Loving <laughs> hoes that want to get nutted in. What do you mean? I got eleven kids. She's an advocate for raw sex and what I believe in. Hey man, she said nut in my coochie, I ran through the TV. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming right now. I love that. I love her. Sexy. If you see this baby, hey. If you see this baby. I just want you to know I'm the man for you. Like, look at me. I'm, I'm dreadheaded. Chicago. <laughs> I never put you on video. I, I promise you. I won't go live. I won't do shit. I love you, babe. And I'll take you to the town to get you Italian beef. On GD short. <laughs> on everything short. You kick it with me in the game. We ain't gonna put you on FaceTime. Nah, Niggas ain't gonna expose you. This is a freestyle. <laughs> Man, nah, this ain't no freestyle. This from this from the heart. Man. <laughs> so what this nigga see? That's niggas always thinking they can speak for a nigga. Look, <laughs> look at me. I'm <laughs> look at hard. me. Five, 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 hot nuts. Holla at your boy. Like I'm trying to get down. Like 
Hit me on Instagram, Big Gang Go Three Nine. Go through, hey, go through my management. Pop Austin Media. They got it shaking. Like fuck with them niggas. I'm telling you, hey, hey, sexy red. I make you more than red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You like them drink, and I got good teeth. You see? Yeah, I got a golden smile. I'm j- just for you, babe. I hold your mic. I hold your stack of money you be having. I got you. I count it for you at the end show. I know that shit ain't old money. I know it's new money. They just hating on you, babe. You unique, baby. I love you in your red hair. Mwah. Kiss them feet, girl. I love you, baby. I'm coming in that neck, coochie girl. You hear me? This I thing love go you. I, I love you, girl. I love you, baby. This I need. So, I need. I need her to see this. Her for real. Watching this. Oh, I don't give a damn, <laughs> nigga. That's gonna be my mother-in-law, nigga. What you talking about, nigga? <laughs> nigga, she loves dreadheads, and I'm from Chicago, and I'm. I check out. I hit the box. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't need her. She need me. <laughs> Nigga, I don't want your money or nothing. I want some coochie. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Like, I'm shooting my shot. Why well, I got the platform. That's all right. God said let that be light. I'm okay. shining some light on the situation. Okay. I want to thank Pop Austin Media for letting me get to it. <laughs> Shit. Hey, hey, if it's grass on the infield, what I play, nigga? Play, play ball. ball. <laughs> nigga, you know my sin. You know, I'm, I'm coming for it. <laughs> I don't want nobody else but you, baby. You. That Look at the camera. Up. You. I got some. But you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's switch topics a little bit. Uh, you up to date on um famous Richard, that famous Richard dude? Yes. You seen him on oh. No Jumper acting crazy? Have you seen him lately? Man. Oh, he be going I'm gonna tell y'all. <laughs> is he a, is he real or cause you know what I'm saying? People saying his background don't check out, but of man, he's that nigga is a fucking clown, bro. I just I'm gonna be honest with y'all. He, he's bro. in our comments too, cause we've been going in on him, so he be commenting on every man. video, so he gonna see this. Man, all I'm gonna say is, bro, you make niggas look bad from the land, bro. <laughs> you are you embarrassment, like nigga, <laughs> like you don't even move like niggas from Chicago, bro. Like you don't even got that aura about you, fam. Like you, you a goofy. Like I want you to see this too. You <laughs> goofy. Call, call you goofy. He goofy as a motherfucker. Call like. The he a man, what? <laughs> a boofer, nigga. That nigga's a goofy mark. Oh, if Overwolf was a person. If oh, hey, Overwolf was a person, that nigga goofed. He goofed <laughs> out, like nigga. And that's and that's I was just and, asking, bro, about that. And you know what's crazy, bro? I'ma tell you some real shit. And I'ma tell you some real shit, bro. He made me think of just niggas like I hate that. Like he took he like like with the stereotype, what? like. You trying to take the Chicago persona and run with it. Right, 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 right. Like, everybody, that's not, you know everybody ain't like that. From like, no, nigga, like, <laughs> you're a nomenclature, nigga. Like, <laughs> you're a joke. Like, that's a joke. Like, that nigga's a joke. Like, I have no respect whatsoever. He couldn't even have a fucking interview. <laughs> you trying to get some money but can't even do an interview. <laughs> what block you from? Where you from? What hood you from? Like, who claim you? Who your big homie? Who fuck with you? What set you apart of? Cause whoever it just really just seemed like the, some some niggas just seen you, found you, and put you on the internet. Like yeah. that's it. Like that's all I've ever heard about the nigga. Even and when I was at the crib, niggas was like, man, that nigga goofy as fuck, bro. Like that nigga ain't no shit on bro. That nigga tweaking. He just he just a nigga that using the city like which he should because he from there. But it's like same thing with Cowboy. I love Cowboy. Love his music. But when they was trying to like, oh, wait, he from Chicago. I'm like, oh, he's from the suburbs of Chicago. Like, y'all got to stop giving at the niggas, man. Everybody not from Chicago. They from Chicago land area. Everybody's not from the inner city. Motherfuckers is from Elgin, Aurora, Kankakee. Niggas is from Forest Park. Niggas is Fopo around here, man. Like, no, because niggas be. right now. And, and you'll see what I mean. Niggas be, bro, niggas be real deal Holyfield on, on some real shit. Niggas be, oh, yeah, that nigga from Chicago. And a nigga, nigga ain't, can't even tell you not one place he ate at, on block he been to, where he, where he from, none of that shit. And even if he can, it's nobody really behind him or nothing like that to really be like, hey, yeah, I can vouch for this nigga. I fuck with this nigga. Like, me, I'm vouchable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Niggas fuck with me. I'm the big homie. I'm everybody big homie. I love everybody. And everybody love me. So it works out. But niggas like that, nah, you just give Chicago a bad name, bro. <laughs>
<laughs> what you think about uh, Trench's news? You up to date on him? They saying he's snitching. Man, I would tell you some real shit about Trench's news because I know him personally too. Mm. Um, the project that I originally started out from, uh, Madden Park, where he's from originally, Newtown, where he started out doing his stories on the Bean Team and all them niggas. Like, I grew up around some of the guys that was a part of the Bean Team and got caught up with that indictment. And that was from Madden Park in Newtown. You know what I'm saying? So I, I have a personal connection with this situation far as like him telling. Like, far as me seeing that, it's like, damn, man, like, you got caught up on some clout shit, bro, and you don't even know what you did. You fucked, like, you can't, like, once a nigga put a snitch jacket on you in Chicago, that's bad. Like, that's death. Like, you might as well go into witness protection because it's over with. Like, that's it. Like, that's it. That's one of the rumors why they say Zach TV got killed. That's one of the rumors why they say he got killed. I don't want to ruffle no feathers, but street lore has it. You know what I'm saying? Niggas was watching his interviews. He was getting, he was incriminating, not in, not directly incriminating niggas. Because he's just, the, at the time, he was just the interviewer of the podcast. I would never say nobody in journalism needs something to happen to them, bro. Like with Vlad. Vlad ain't forcing these niggas to get on the internet and tell them they want the fuck to say. <laughs> like, let's be real, people. Let's talk about Keefy D. What you think? Oh, he going to jail. <laughs> it's over with. Because that's who left to hold the bag. He left to hold the bag, but I'm going to tell you this. If Diddy really, which ain't no if. I'm going to be realistic. Sean, I fuck with you. If. Lawyer. Lawyer. Because <laughs> if it is, like like it's been preached on the street for years. Like the, the, the lore, the legend behind it. Like the Eric Von Zip nigga from Harlem holding the money and all that shit. You know, a lot of people don't understand the streets be tied into a lot of shit. To know your history on a lot of shit, Eric Von Zip used to be under Bumpy Johnson. Like, he was like one of his last understudies. Like, he learned from Bumpy Johnson. He died like in 2012. He died of natural causes. He's one of them type gangsters. Like, you can look, you can Google him, you can look him up on, on motherfucking um, Instagram pages, on pictures and all that shit. He in pictures with Rich, Alpo, all them niggas. Like, he was one of the major figures in the 80s in New York, period. And Puffy was his protege. A lot of niggas don't know that. See, when niggas think Puffy just dancing and singing, I say, this the nigga y'all got now. This the nigga y'all know about. The nigga that started Bad Boy, the nigga that I grew up with, with, that had Wolf with him, that was his bodyguard. You know who Wolf is. Wolf the nigga that killed Jake Robles. He the nigga that started the East Coast, West Coast War. A lot of people don't know that. He the nigga that killed the nigga in Atlanta at JD at, at JD after party. That's the reason why Suge Knight had a grudge against, started his grudge against Bad Boy. Story. So it's a lot of street lore that niggas don't know. And I just so happen to be in the ends on that because just my family in the, you know what I'm saying? Being that nigga. So Eric, back to what I was saying. Eric Von Zip was more so like a street nigga broker type shit. If you want something done, you can go to him. He had the relationship with the Crips in Cali. Keefy e. D'd him years ago on some drug shit. That's how a lot of like, people don't understand. You think it's a coincidence? Or you ever notice, you know C. Gutter from Junior Mafia, Big's cousin? How you think he crip? They was making their rounds out there in the early 90s. That's how you how you think crip got to New York. Harlem was one of the first crip strongholds. Then it became, then Brooklyn, not Brooklyn, is crip the fuck out of New York. Like, that's crip central in New York. That's crip and GD central in New York. But Eric Von Zip was going out to New York, I mean, out to Cali, making his rounds in the 80s, in the 90s. Who is his protege? He's puff, fuck with Puffy. Puffy them having problems with death row at this point. Niggas got to understand, Suge and Puffy were contemporaries at one point. They were like this, just like me and Donnie be. Real niggas, that's crazy, right? Think about that. Puff and Suge Knight used to be like this. Yeah. From like 1990 to like 93, 94, 95, until the Source Awards. So we're saying, and up until one, they were like this. They were cool. It was it wasn't uncommon to see them in the same building, and and Suge would be doing his big guy thing, and and Puffy would be working the room doing his little guy thing. Do you know that Suge Knight used to manage Mary J. Blige, Jodeci, all these guys, 
and they were under Puffy at Uptown and, and dealing with Bad Boy at the time as well. Remember, Puffy did Mary J. Blige's whole album, but she was managed by Suge Knight. You get what I'm saying? So I say that to say beef has always been the root of everything that plays out in the end in jealousy. But back to Eric Von Zip, he gets up with Puffy. Of course, he's this is his protege. You got problems out west. I know you need protection. Who does he reach out there? Keefy D in the South Side Crips. Now, Keefy D ain't no slouch. Keefy D is street nigga, bro. The fuck the rap shit. He was with Above the Law, all that shit in the 80s. Keefy D and them real street niggas, bro. He the beta north to Suge Knight. If there's a red Suge Knight, there's a blue. <laughs> you feel me? There's the alternate universe just being 100. Niggas look at him and see him as an old man. But, bro, it was rooms that Keefy D walked in, nigga, niggas ran out of us. stiff niggas, super stiff niggas, killers. I'm talking about niggas that was chiefs and shit. I'm talking about walked out of rooms when he walked in. So, they look at the old man they see now as a shell of himself after years of what he was been doing and be like, oh, he old. Nah, that nigga really like that. Like, he can get something done to you. So, Eric Von Zip sets up the connection with the Crips and Bad Boy. Of course, C Gutter being around big, he adapts. You know how it is. Your crew hang with my crew. We eventually it's gonna happen. C Gutter like what they got going on. So he got put down with the South Side Crips, believe it or not. That's why he got so to this day, he has so much plug and respect amongst the Crips in New York and Cali. Why? Because he bought that bridge to Brooklyn. Von Zip pays Puffy pays Von Zip a million dollars, allegedly. Cause the story out there now. So I ain't snitching on nobody or talking about uncommon knowledge. He allegedly pays. He holds. Von Zip is the escrow between him and Keefy D and Orlando Anderson. Mind you, they don't talk about this part of the game. When they was warned, when it was Death Row versus Bad Boy, Death Row was in New York, and they will be op hunting. Bad Boy will be in Cali, and they will be op hunting. Nobody, there was no, see, if you know the street lore behind this, I know it's getting deep, right? If you know street lore, it's a certain underground individual, he dead now from New York. Old head nigga. Him and Big was in traffic. And Puff, I mean, where him and Big was in traffic. And Suge Knight just so happened to pull up next to them niggas on Fairfax or whatever. In Cali, in L.A., downtown L.A. The OG nigga told Big, like, there he go right there. So these they saw each other. Source awards, shows, everything. Before it got deadly. Before the conflict got deadly, they was just whooping on each other. Niggas was catching each other. You see that death row chain? You get one, give me. It was a bounty on death row chains. Now, mind you, this the most powerful label in the world at the time. It's bounties on death row chains. That's like niggas saying this bounty on Rockefeller chains. If you knew how, how heavy Rockefeller was rolling back in the early 90s and late early 2000s, you would have knew that was a death sentence thinking you was going to snatch one of their chains. Because if you would have knew, you would have knew, oh, you would know who was behind J and them for real. Like I tell nigga, he still a hoes right now. OG Wan, nigga, he was the plug for Alpo and that nigga Rich Porter. And that's Jay-Z, big homie. That's to let you know how much the streets is tied into the industry. Reason why I fuck with Suge Knight, and I don't give him, if I don't do nothing that's giving him too much credit for nothing else, he made it possible for niggas like me to come fresh off the block with a little bit of knowledge and a shrewd business mentality and get and, and show you how to get in the rooms. All he showed me, all you got to do is how to mindset, learn the business, become a savant of what you believe in, and you can get in the door just like everybody else. But it was bounties on them chains, them niggas was getting into it. Puffy paid Eric Von Zip a million dollars. Von Zip never gave the money to Keefe D. Mm. And if you look it up on Vlad right now on your phone, it's on Vlad right now. Keefe D, the FBI telling Keefe D that Eric, Eric Von Zip got paid. He just never gave him the money. They just could never implicate Puffy because Von Zip is dead. So if, if nobody can say who paid who. That's what's going to be so hard about getting Puffy. I, that's what I was leading that up to. That's going to be the, the, the Rosetta Stone to why Puffy will beat the case. Von Zip is dead. And even if he was alive, he wouldn't snitch on him. 
Von Zip, that was his dad's best friend. Everybody knows Puff Daddy's dad got killed when he was four years old. He was a heavyweight for Nicky Barnes. So when he died, Von Zip took over him and started raising him. So it's deeper than rap. So no, he would have, he's going to beat the case. There's nobody to say Diddy gave anybody a million dollar cash. Mind you, this is 1996. Ain't no PayPal, ain't no cash app. <laughs> Ain't none of that. Ain't no ain't no document. Ain't no phone record proving that. No paperwork. No, nope, there's no paperwork. It's on at this point it's only hearsay. The only person that's gonna go down is Keefy D. Cause he the last one left. And he talked thinking he had immunity. Which was stupid, because if you know better, it's something in the federal guidelines called dual sovereignty. And the evidence that they can't they don't use on you on the state level, they can and will use that shit on the federal level. Why did the case get picked up again? Because niggas forgot Tupac Mama before she passed. She took the case to the Supreme Court and they reopened it, remember? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Niggas forgot about that shit. Mm-hmm. Nigga, he forgot about that shit. He's talking, not realizing that before she passed, Afeni Shakur oh, went to the Supreme Kate Court and his sister went to the court to get the case reopened. If the Supreme Court overrules, that's a federal matter. I can make everybody down to the state level open back up and investigate and we coming to get you. So nah, if anybody going down, it's him. It won't be Puffy. If this was 15 years ago, yeah. Maybe, we'd be in trouble, maybe. Now, nah, everybody dead and gone. Who's alive? Wolf dead, Puffy like the last man standing, Big dead. Anybody that was close enough to see him do the transaction that would have been with him, either dead and gone or moved on. Hmm. Case closed. Case closed. Even if he, even if the FBI got it on wiretap, they don't have him on wiretap. They have Eric Von Zip and they have Keefy D talking about what's gonna happen and all this and that. And they got them transcripts of them niggas talking about how they gonna get the chains and how Baby Lane was gonna, was was looking for niggas and shit like that. So it stops with them niggas. One dead and one old. The other nigga, he really cleared from absolvers. Because even if they was to say, well, Puffy did it. Man, Wolf gave them niggas that money. He did too. What money? He never got paid. Puffy walk off Scott's free. <laughs> That's crazy, right? It's crazy. He broke it all down. Um, let's switch our gears a little bit. Uh, you've been keeping up with Bobby Altoff, that white girl who's interviewing everybody. Yeah. They're saying, because, um, uh, you know, academics is going at, like, Drake. J. Cole and all them, because um, they're going over there to, like, do, I guess, you know, white people's um, platforms, but not coming to the hip-hop platforms. But they say it's because, you know, hip-hop platforms are messy. And so, you know, they want to keep their uh, image and brand clean, so they're going over there, which is why, you know, they're saying she's blowing up, but they're saying she's an industry plan. But do you think, you know, hip-hop platforms are messy? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like the sport of hip hop is messy. Controversy sells. Controversy sells. What the hell? Yeah, hey, hey, <laughs> like, like it's hip hop. Hip like, hip hop. Rap music. Controversy like sales. like That's this rap like. music. Like this shit was made off of. I mean, motherfuckers don't want to don't want to say this shit, but just real as it get. Rap was made off of controversy and street shit. My nigga better than your nigga. My team better than your team. My bitch look better than your bitch. My crew better than your crew. You niggas is whack. Y'all fuck. Y'all niggas do crack. You niggas suck. You niggas ain't getting no money. It's been like that since the eighties. Yeah. Am I bullshit? You know, it's always been like that. So the the the, the room of hip hop has never changed. Just the shit around it. Me personally, I would love for more artists to go. Nobody fucks with DJ Academics. I I would tell you why niggas don't fuck with DJ Academics. I like DJ Academics. I think he's a great journalist, if we that's what we call it. He's a great provocateur. He makes it personal. That's why nobody wants to go on his show. He make it personal. Mm-hmm. He make it personal. It becomes a thing. It becomes like a, a thing. It becomes a beat to where you talking about you gonna get niggas, I'm gonna pay three, I forgot who he told you, I'm gonna pay 300,000 to get you choked out and all that shit. Like, Cause a nigga didn't want to answer a certain question on your interview, like certain niggas, bro. Like, I at this point of age, niggas like J Cole, niggas like Drake, they don't want to go on podcasts where they got to worry about 
the ops and shit. Mm-hmm. So, Let's go thank him ass. So ass I would say, quick. yeah, cause see, uh, Drake could go, Drake could go on, uh, on DJ Academics and nigga Academics ask, ask him about Adonis. <laughs> he asked him about his son. <laughs> he asked him about it. the first question would be, how's Adonis? Yeah. Well, 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 you know, we just, you know, you know it's DJ Academics. You know, you know how he talks. It's DJ Academics. We were here with Drake. We were Drake the goat. You know how that fat nigga talk. We here with Drake the goat. We just want to know how's. I done is doing after that <laughs> diss with Pusha T. Like that's how the nigga coming. And you and, then, and you would look at the nigga like bitch ass nigga, bitch ass nigga. <laughs> so I bitch mean, let's be real here. Who wants to go? I right, bro, who would want to come on Pop Austin Media if you niggas was a pain in the ass? Like that's the mute. That's the beauty. I'm gonna be one hundred. I don't give a fuck. That's the master stroke about y'all podcast for me. Like. It's the fact that the, the two creators create a cool environment. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lush environment. It's easy for me to smoke, talk, chop it up with y'all. You feel what I'm saying? Y'all engaging. Nobody wants to go on a podcast where they got to worry about their anonymity and secret lives being attacked. I don't want a motherfucker to, man, hey, get on here. Hey, what's up, big gang? How you doing today, man? We just want to know out of your nine baby mamas, which other two are you fucking still? And did you get all 11 of your kids? I'll be like, whoa. And that's how they come. Yeah. I, I, bro, bro, that's how they come. I ain't going to lie. Like, I ain't going to lie. Like, if I would have my artists come up here and stuff like that, it would definitely be, like, certain things. Like, I would definitely slip in in, like, a, a little email, like, don't ask about this. Don't ask about yeah. this. So, don't ask about this. The moment that you do ask about this, we going to get up. <laughs> like, we going to, you know what I'm saying? No, no, like, no, 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 Fuck that, fuck that, fuck that. I would. You know what? I would. I don't, I don't agree with that. But I don't agree with that. I'm going to tell you I don't agree with that. I'm going to tell you why. That's prehand. That's you. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because all you doing is creating that 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 content for them to put out there. That's just that's yeah. clickbait. Right. You see what I'm saying? I don't. I got time for that. I got a business to run. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm already paying people. Bro, PRs is going up just because of all the shit they got to cover up. Yep. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like you don't understand the business, brother. <laughs> I already pay a goddamn lawyer five hundred dollars every time she got to look over a goddamn paperwork that I send to her. You see what I'm saying? But yeah. people don't understand that. Artists don't understand that. Artists don't understand the reason that they need a manager at a certain point in their career. You Everybody don't need a, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, it's, it's. I keep telling know, niggas. It's, that's it's some real shit. Every, every, everybody don't, bro. I'm going to tell you some real shit. Everybody don't need a manager, bro. Of course. That's why I said they don't need it to a certain point of their career. Everybody don't. Oh, man. I be telling niggas all the time. Niggas be having like 3,000 followers and be like, man, hey, I need you to manage me, bro. I be like. Bro, you barely want to, bro. You barely want to pay for a fucking playlist slide. Man, I, I choose. Fuck, I, I, I choose. Manage you, I choose who I want to manage, bro. And that's just real shit. And there's no disrespect to any anybody that's watching this and that has reached out to me about it. I choose who I manage because yeah, at the end of the day, I've with. learned so many things in the in the past as far as like, you know, what I'm saying artists and shit. You yeah, know what I'm that's why I met with it too. It's like. At this point, I'm on like my Harry Potter shit. Like the wand chooses the wizard. Like, <laughs> yeah, you want to fuck with me? Like, yeah, I, I really gonna find you. But for the most part, niggas be wanting you to manage their career and shit. Yeah, they don't be having no type of motion. No, it's not even that. You getting on Facebook and getting 400 views it's, it's is not, not motion. It's not that. Everybody, they need they need artist development because they need to understand what's need to be managed. They need to understand what's what's business. A lot of artists that jump out here, somebody asks them for their feature price, they'll immediately throw out a number. And then that's what that person's gonna pay, but they didn't think about the travel. They didn't think about what is where they gonna stay if it's out of state. They didn't think about you know certain things like that. That's where the manager comes in who knows these things, that's experienced and know how to do those things and they make sure he gets your value. You say you want this amount for every show? Cool, we gonna build up around that amount. Or we gonna figure out how we can get that amount, whether I gotta split percentages at the door or if I gotta bring a merch table to make sure we run it up, whatever. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, like, it's, yeah. it's like artists gotta have, under, artists need to go through artist development. You got to. You know what I'm saying? And if y'all need some artist development, then y'all need to holler at your boy. Thanks. Like hey, real talk, like hey. we can get you right. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it funny. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about y'all exactly. You know what y'all do for the for the people watching? Because I know Big Game, you've been frustrated a lot with kind of artists hitting y'all up, but not be willing to invest into themselves. 
So just talk about a little bit about how much this thing really costs. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> no, it's funny that we say that because um, when me and Caddy first locked in or whatnot, um, that was one thing that I told him that was gonna be an itch. Like I was like, bro, and I believe it. <laughs> so now that I'm at this point where shit like up, and it's like, oh man, I look at him some days when I be with him, and I be like. Nigga. And now I you see why, that, fuck. now you see why I be like I be man. Like, Cause I be looking at this nigga like you ain't warn me about this part. Nigga. <laughs> you did, but you ain't tell me it was gonna make me this mad. Uh, like niggas will niggas will go buy fake ass jewelry. <laughs> niggas will go buy fake ass jewelry. Niggas will go buy fake ass streams. Niggas will go buy fake everything in a music career, and will not put any real money towards what they got to do to get ahead. I've never seen no shit like that. Especially the fake stream. You couldn't you couldn't pay me to be up the way some of these niggas be acting or whatever. And somebody come to me like, hey, you know that I know what the fuck I'm doing. What do you want to get done? What's your budget? You're not, and this what, and put the camera on me real fast. Okay. I want niggas to see this real fast. I'm speaking for me and my mans right here. I'm like, I gotta put this shit out because I mean this from my soul to my motherfucking soul. With all due respect. Well, well, let me, well, let me, well, let me smoke with you. Well, well, let me smoke if you gonna uh, put it. <laughs> I want niggas to hear me when I say this, and I want to look at the camera and say this. Y'all think paying niggas is paying. To, I guess y'all feel some way about paying people because it's looked upon like, well, I'm paying the nigga to, to do something for me. Uh, you know, niggas got their ego complexes, which is fine. But a lot of y'all are embarking on a, a journey that you know nothing about. You niggas are going down a path that you have no direction, no clue, no know how, but you just know you want to be famous. You know you want to get your mom out the hood, and you know you want a motherfucking track off. Right. Now, with all due respect, if that's what you want, nigga, I can help you get there. But we got to have a budget. Right. There's no such thing as you getting money without making money. In the rap industry, to get a deal in 2023. Spending money. It ain't no spending money. You have to invest in yourself. They are not signing you. Because you look good. And the best and the worst shit that you can do is look like you got money. Because boy. once you look like you got money, boy, boy, it's harder to get signed. It's not, it's, it's just more so you set your expectation. Like, they, the expectation like, different. It's like if you, they ain't reaching if, out the if same. you don't show the level of you grinding to get there and then you just got it, then they're going to expect you to do more. It's gonna be you're gonna have to show more than the change and the stack of money every time. You're gonna have to be showing you doing certain things. Like you're gonna have to keep on being extravagant. That's you know what I'm saying? Especially if you build that your persona and your your image around all that. If you build it around, I got money. I, you got to keep on coming with it. You know what I'm saying? So I always encourage artists to, especially if we're doing artist development, I always encourage them to show the real. Like show where you at. So they can, so your art, your your fans can engage with you. Yes. You know what I'm saying, and they can follow your journey. Cause now they feel like they're a part of your shit. You know what I'm saying. So show that, be authentic yeah. with who you are. Like show who you are. You know what I'm please saying. Please do, please and do. If, and if you're going to act and just, you know what I'm saying, act. And if you're going to be a cap rapper and you're going to make it seem, then you got to make sure you have all the plots and everything in that motherfucker to make it seem like you you got to put on the show. That's all I got to say. You I know? would have to honestly say, for the most part. For me, explaining this to y'all on some real shit, a lot of artists don't want to take the time to really do what it takes to 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 be. They want the accolades, but not the workhorse they got to go into it. You got to, it, it, it's a machine. It takes $200,000 to break a fucking single, a record. Mm. Two bands, 200 beans. No bullshit. Not two bands, 200 beans. No bullshit. And Not two hundred dollars. And, and, and that's and that's just the hope that everybody like it. Two hundred beans. What that nigga? What that nigga Jay Z say? I bought fifty, and I ain't talking dollars. I'm talking them big ones with me. We talking about nigga. When I learned that from Baby Grand, 
and I seen it with my own eyes. One single, every rip, two hundred a pop. As cheap as you going is maybe one hundred and seventy five, maybe. Two hundred is the entry mark. So just imagine if you going extra hard with motherfucking um influence. Remember how they had the bands challenge, all that shit when Shelly was doing all that. That shit costs money. You paying influencers, you paying five or six influencers, five hundred dollars a pop, a band. Not no big names, just little mid level influencers that got enough reach. Even with podcasting. Even with podcasting, even with this shit, just to get on motherfuckers' platforms and shit, you either got to be somebody or you got to be connected with somebody, bro. Right. You just ain't getting on no motherfucking any podcast this day and age. Mm-mm. Nah. Yeah, we stopped taking calls and DMs and all that. Yeah. We spending almost yeah. $9,000 a month on this. Real talk. Ah. It got it, it got to be dead. Just speaking of just the platform y'all got, it got to be dedicated, diverse content. I've said this, and I'm giving y'all y'all flowers. Y'all are legit a, a, a needed staple in Central Texas hip hop. That's why I I fuck with y'all so tough, cause y'all make it easier for guys like me to get the message out there. Like, bro, it's people out here like me and Donnie. We got shit like GDMG, NQA. We got shit going to where it, it's. I just my mission statement, bro. We're here to work with artists. We're here to get artists to the next level. It's just y'all got to want that shit. Like, I don't want it better than nobody else. Facts. I don't want it better than nobody else no more. I don't want it better than nobody else no more. Been there, done that. Got the T-shirt. Like, I don't want that no more. People don't understand, man. Labels like 300, uh, Electra, Def Jam, Atlantic, they like doing, um, they like doing uh, what I would call, uh, Go ahead. Yeah. So. Slam just walked through the building. Door just walked through the building. What's good? So, nah, man. I was just telling niggas, though, like, uh, 300, all them labels like that, they, they shine away from 360 now. They giving niggas what, I, what they call partnership deals. And really now... What that is, it's just loosely structured distribution deals. But that's two times. Yeah. They just, they ain't even doing 360 no more. They ain't even doing, yeah, they need something back though. They ain't doing 360 right now. They're doing distribution. They doing distribution with like the minimum advance, maybe like 100K. Well, I accept that, um, that the labels, are, now he had uh, heard a, a word from the industry that they're giving out like, a thousand dollar deals because they'll do something like on TikTok where they give you two thousand five hundred, you know what I'm saying, for you to run up and you know what I'm saying, and yeah, to make something. But they're doing that now, that's what academics said. But I just got somebody a thousand dollars, I just got a nigga a thousand dollars through video, yeah, for see, a single. Just they just gave yeah, it to him, see, that's what, yeah, they just gave it to him, they just gave it to him. Like, oh, you just so it's like, come on, who like. If it really pay and it really pays for you just to invest in yourself, get a distribution deal and do it yourself. Oh, but for the niggas that want to do the deal shit, that's why I tell you, I got two distribution deals. I, I got two of them. Got I got one with EQ and I got one with video. I, got I can three. release on any platform I want and I can get assistance from any one of them. Symphonic, video, uh, and uh, TSO, which is through a uh, live, live mixtape. Oh God! Go like ahead. keep gotta keep them like gotta gotta keep them relationships because that's the grassroots of it. I tell movies all the time: download it on your phone, pay a hundred dollars to get your shit pushed up to DSPs. Right. What's wrong, bro? It, it, it's blogs out here that's charging. I just, I just don't understand why you like you spend all your money to make it look like you're a rapper, but you won't spend money on marketing, mm. like trying to do your playlisting and stuff like that. It's really simple because, like, really at the end of the day, that's just like. You you put your, you put money into that. You feel money into that for you to build up your streams. You're gonna get it back eventually. Like it's gonna come back. You know what I'm That's saying? What but what but is. but what you're but what you're doing is like it's treating it like stocks. If you looked at something like if you were doing the little Amazon shit, yeah. if you were doing that shit, you'll be waiting per month to see your results. Mm -hmm. So why you can't see put some money into it and wait back a couple Probably months to see is. your results? Like motherfuckers. A lot of these a lot of these a lot of these youngers they not understanding the 
the, the fantasy in front of him is like, that's not what's going to get you popping. People seeing you with all of this extravagant shit and you do, you know what I'm saying? Like right. you going all these places, that's right. not what's going to get your, that's not what's going to get you over there. Right. You know, you put work and it's coming music, from a young nigga. Networking, you feel me? Right. Like how, how, how the labels can see you uh, network with other artists, you feel me? Like if you, if there's other people popping in your city, why you not featured with them? Yeah, hey. Why you, why you ain't fucking with no <laughs> I just told an artist this. I ain't gonna say no names. I just told an artist this. A label won't sign him because they see him with the same little niggas doing the same features. You cannot stay in your group in this game. Right. You have right, to. You got you hey, have hey, to, hey, hey, the label, 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 fuck with the nigga. nigga they, and, and with the crazy part is, I'm gonna tell you what they do to y'all, what they do to the artists, what they do with these AR means, these label means, what they do in these buildings. They got a room already, about, a little, about, about this big. With about three or four niggas at a table with laptops and no servers bullshit. around. No bullshit. With servers around. No bullshit. When a nigga come in and your art, the artist come in, you stop in, you gonna look. Hey, I'm so and so and so so. You think you just being social? Bro, they get the they get your going. name and they go right in the computer and start googling. You. Yep. First thing they go look for, I'm finna show you because I got one. That's fact. I'm finna show you something right now. What they go look for. The first number one platform they go to when they go look, they go on Google. And they go look up and they go see if you got a one sheet yep. on your name. Yep. They go see. They're not no links, not no news links. They go look. That's why right they're going to let them know how verified you are in the world, period. Right. I'll use this as an example. Here's Shelly. You see what I'm saying? They're going to look at that. If that don't even pop up, you might as well go ahead and turn around. But they don't understand that whole pro- that's And the, that's Google. That, that, that's the development part that, that people don't understand. Like, I'd be charging for uh, consultations. Like, I charge $500 for consultations. They don't understand what that bread. I'm really about to put together, like, an EPK for them or one sheet. Something that they can go around to solicit themselves as a artists like they're a brand you gotta look at yourself as a business you're trying to get into either a venue you're trying to get somebody to uh, invest in you something that's the reason why you have to have it but they don't understand the business part of it so like whenever it comes to the consultation for one i'm definitely pay- you're paying for my time i'm not about to sit over here and just have this conversation listen to all these goddamn songs Facts. And, and, and make it seem like oh bro i'm the best thing you know how many times i hear that shit you know how many times people you know what I'm saying? Say that shit. Man, to I just so got a like, nigga sixteen thousand dollar deal. That nigga ain't give me shit. <laughs> Fuck niggas. <laughs> <laughs> like real talk. I'm like real like, shit. Like, real I talk, took a nigga, nigga to the dough. Like took a nigga nah, to the dough. The reason why there's only a certain amount of players that make it to a draft. Yeah, yeah, like I took a nigga <laughs> to the dough. Sixteen thousand with Sony, nigga. Records company, this records code, nigga. The people that sign FBG yeah. Duck, yeah. nigga. Them niggas. Took a nigga to the dope, 16,000. Nigga, that nigga blocked me and nigga, that he don't be no more, nigga. Mm-hmm. You for real, so pay me up front. Right. Sorry, not sorry. Right. Pay me the fuck up front, dog. Right. Pay me up front. Cause right. what I'm gonna do for you, ain't, ain't no guarantee that you gonna, get, you gonna break me off on the back end. And what y'all have to understand, it's not personal. It's business. business. Absolutely. Oh man, it's business. Right. Like a nigga told me, man, hey, an executive told me this. Hey, Caddy, I like you, but you got to put your feelings in your back pocket. This is business. When that nigga Chase said that, that changed my whole outlook. Yep. Nigga told me put my feelings in the back pocket, my back pocket, this business. I was like, you right. Amen. Sure you right. Let's get to it. Amen. I think we can end it on that point. Uh, we're definitely going to have you back. We'll talk. We'll talk. Um, what is your last minute words you want to say to the people? Man, I'm going to tell y'all some real shit. This is really for the artists. Artists. Stay consistent. Believe in yourselves. Invest in yourselves. Quit oversaturating the market. Going live every day. Trying to rap, talk, or just convince. Let the music talk for you. Everybody don't need commentary to your musical story. Sometimes we're in a realm where we just want to see and we want to watch and we want to absorb the information that we get from you as an artist. We can't live with your music if you Sam Rothstein and all the time on camera. Like, I tell it all the time, music is expression itself. You shouldn't even talk, with me as a rapper, I feel like you should, every word that come out your mouth should be a rhyme. Fuck that. Like, you should be rhyming to me when you talking to me, nigga, if you really a rapper, I'm sorry. 
Like, nigga, you, what's up, my nigga? Well, we on the day. You better start rapping or something, <laughs> nigga. You rap, right? You better be doing that. <laughs> Real shit. But I want to say, man, shouts out to the whole NQA, everybody on the roster, NQA ladies. My nigga Donnie came with me. Shout out to GDMG. We got big shit coming up. Welcome to the Trap Series coming soon. Double, he performing again. He getting his chops wet. Uh, shouts out to my boys at Empire and all that good shit. Shouts out to y'all because y'all showing me love right now. Fuck with y'all. Uh, shouts out to really everybody that's doing this shit. Like, we doing this shit. I ain't really going to hold niggas up because y'all know who I am. Y'all know what I'm here for. I'm here to get social commentary, good game, and real results. Shout out to my man's NQA Cartel J for coming through with me. You know what I'm saying? Whole Colleen, Texas. Austin, Texas, the whole independent music scene right now is is actually going good. Like, yeah. it's a lot of people like Dora, like shit. I just seen a couple of her performances. I'm like, I'm watching. I'm seeing what's going on with everybody. So it's just, it's in a good place right now. I think everybody really getting their second win. Yep. I really see a lot of people like picking back up. Like, all right, it's the winner. We let motherfuckers have the summer. It's time to go. So that's, that's the work ethic that just... Bleeding into everything. And, of course, I love being here. Pop Austin Media. I want to work for them one day. You know what I'm saying? I love it. You know what I'm saying? I love rocking with y'all. Y'all always good conversation. My man be in the corner doing his thing. That's my man's 50 grand over there. I fuck with him. He really be making me laugh. He like the ad. You remember you watch, You know Boondocks. You know the nigga in the back that be, yeah, Tom. He like the ad little voice in the back. Yeah, you peanut butter and jelly. It's gonna be peanut butter in your ass, nigga. He's the funny nigga in the in the. In the, in the I love him, bro. He's the kind. He's the background voice that you be like. You know what, nigga? You right. Maybe we do need to stump this nigga out. Like, <laughs> maybe you right. He the boys that be like, what did he do to make them niggas that mad? Like that's him. So I just appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for tapping in with us. Thank y'all for tapping in with me. Picking up on the knowledge, information, wisdom, understanding. Peace, power, divine. And where fuck with they, me. Where can they find y'all at before we go? Oh, find me on Instagram, Big Gang underscore 039. You can find me at Cash the Mobile. Um, and shout out to uh, Ill Manor Shows. Um, shout out to my, my business partners out there. Man, we got... Um, Ooh, uh, Max uh, O'Cream, Max Halloween, O'Cream, Halloween. Yeah, uh, my nigga Double G's is gonna be uh, performing. We got we got a dope ass little line. Max O'Cream at that time. I'm gonna be turned. Hey, shouts out to the whole GYMB, Drizzy, Dollar D, love y'all. What's good, y'all? It's TJ the DJ. And this is Jet. Hey, man. Thanks for checking out this clip. Make sure you hit that like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.